We were thrilled to discover Tyler's work. I saw a painting in a collector's bedroom and it was just instant. I said, who is that? This is fantastic. And then I went to visit Tyler in his studio in Jersey City and very quickly, on the spot, I said, Tyler, we want to offer you a solo exhibition. I've only done that two or three other times in my 50 year career. It's a great feeling, it's been a long journey. I know I'm still young, but I've been painting for a while now and um, I'm just glad that, you know, my grandmother told me to keep on doing it uh, before she died. But um, I just feel grateful, really grateful, and um, really, just really grateful for this opportunity to just be able to show what's inside of me. Well, of course, the technique is astonishing. He is a prodigy. So you very rarely see this perfection of technique with somebody who's in their early 20s. So absolutely remarkable. But what really draws me to Tyler Ballon's work is the humanity. It's this feeling, this compassion for people's lives. I just really wanted to focus on like, you know, the different avenues blacks were able to gravitate towards within the white power structure in order to, you know, advance in life and just make a living for themselves and how they were able to use that sphere of influence to inspire, you know, children like me. Because like, I really focused on a lot of, you know, you know, a lot of scenarios and just situations that really in, impacted me to become the man that I am today. The title for that painting was uh, Every Tear From Our Eye. And I really, well, growing up in Jersey City, you see a lot of memorials. And um, I wanted to change, you know, go against the stereotype. You like most of the memorials that you see in black communities is black on black crime. But I wanted us to like challenge ourselves and confront the reality that, you know, we're already being killed. You know, we're killing each other, but we're already being like strategically killed by the white power structure. So like, I felt like the only shrines that we should see are the ones who were lost unjustly, who gave their lives for a higher cause and whose lives sparked, you know, some type of revolt against the, the white power structure, to be honest. Uh, so uh, that's what I wanted to do. foundation of his work is the strength of his own family and the network of strong friendships in his neighborhood. It's realism, but then again, it's not like photorealism, you know what I mean? It's still like a painterly aspect to it. I'm a huge painter fan, like I wanted to have some painterly effect to it. I don't want it to seem like just an image. And I feel like, you know, it gives you a chance to feel the person's presence even more, you know what I mean? It's like, it's creating a whole new world. I was really inspired the most around the time of uh, George Floyd's death. The media was bombarded by a lot of people protesting and everything, which is really important, but I felt like we were being trapped in that narrative in a way that I don't feel like would be productive for the younger youth. So uh, I wanted to go against the stereotypes that was given to us and uh, to show like we don't, it doesn't, we don't always have to be in conflict or struggle in order to be seen as significant in American society. So focusing on that, I really wanted the work to speak to that as well as, you know, informing the, our like younger generation and inspiring them to move forward uh, in our present um, and, you know, the future. It does show struggle in a way, but it doesn't negate the fact that the struggle exists, but it doesn't trap us in an ongoing cycle of oppression and adversity. And, you know, it's a, it's a way of showing light, you know, at the end of the tunnel. No.